Hello and welcome to RT Magazine, a show about Middletown High School, its students, and the community. News about you and for you. I'm Jacob Holcomb. This week I tell you how restaurants cutting out styrofoam containers is affecting the environment and their bottom line. Baron Rapp joins MHS's very own media specialist on the C&O Canal, where earlier this year she did something extraordinary. Patrick Velez recommends watching Drive to Survive in our RT Plus segment. Aaron Katie answers the question, is a Sprite just a Sprite? It's the Sprite Showdown. This week's show is brought to you by... The Main Cup, local flavor that perks. October 1st, Maryland banned the use of polystyrene, commonly known by the brand name Styrofoam for containers affecting many restaurants packing up their to-go orders. In our first segment, I visit several area restaurants to talk about the people in charge, about what the ban means for the environment and their bottom line. As Maryland bans restaurant use of styrofoam in order to cut back on its harmful impact on the environment, restaurant workers are worried about moving toward more expensive alternatives. As the ban has been set into place, many ask what changes these restaurants are making. Mainly um, transition uh, from styrofoam over to either paper or plastic uh, containers. We've pretty much gone through all of our styrofoam. We'll probably go through those in the next week or so. We never used a lot of styrofoam to begin with, but we did have certain situations where we had to. So now we've turned to alternative methods, which are compostable type things and paper. We had been using some styrofoam cups and um, some to-go containers before, so we just replaced them with a compostable alternative. We've not been using foam for many years. Many are asking, is the ban of styrofoam a good switch for restaurants? I absolutely think that the ban of styrofoam is a great idea. Styrene is found to be terrible for the body. For human health, it causes a leukemia, lymphoma, it's also really bad for our wildlife and for our aquatic life, for our fish and for our streams. I think, yes, it, it is a good idea, especially for um, the environment uh, long term. Obviously, you know, styrofoam does not biodegrade and there's really nowhere for that, th that stuff to go. So I think it is a good transition to start going over to something that could be biodegradable or, or recyclable. I do believe it's a good idea. It appears that it's not very good for the environment and you know we're all about taking care of the world we live in so we're okay with it well i think the ban was seen as something that was necessary based on uh scientific evidence and so uh yes i do think it was a good idea some may say the ban has had some negative effects on their restaurant i would say two negative effects the first is cost um definitely everything is much more expensive than styrofoam and then the other one i would say if you don't find the right material it could get very, uh, like the containers when they have hot food in them, they can get very flimsy and weak if they're saucy and stuff like that. Yes, obviously it's affected our bottom line a lot because uh, in our environment right now, everybody has to take takeout. And so things we normally would have been able to put in a styrofoam container or something along those lines, we have to go to a more expensive product to use. Not really. I mean, it was something that we as a restaurant were going towards anyway. Um, I think any time that we can be um, kind to um, our bodies, kind to the environment, we should do it. No, actually, since I've not been using foam for a long time, uh, it didn't really inf uh, impact me, except that the availability of the products I was usually buying became limited because so many new buyers of those products came into the market right away. Many of us are wondering, are non-styrofoam alternatives more expensive for restaurants? Yes, it's more expensive and sometimes it's much more expensive. Um, as everybody needed to find alternatives, there's a scarcity. So when there's a scarcity in product, then the price goes up. So right now it's been a little more expensive for all of us. Monetarily, it could be slightly more expensive. But when you're talking about like humans health, when we're talking again about the environment, is it more expensive? Also, Maryland was kind enough to give people an extension because they needed like some help monetarily to um, to be able to make the switch. And Senator Kagan came up with a list of 8000 different recyclable like alternatives um, 
for to-go containers and bags and cups. Yes, and at pretty much every way, shape and form, styrofoam is just a cheaper form uh, where everything else is a little bit more expensive, even cents to the dollar adds up when you're buying thousands and thousands of them. Yes, it is. It's always been, but I've always felt that it was important to, to be a leader and do that, um, uh, set an example by using compostable products in the past. And even though they've been more expensive, it's been a big benefit with customers who actually reached out and thanked us for using those. 184 and a half miles. And don't think that last half mile does not make a difference. That's how far MHS media specialist Lindsay Weaver ran, the length of the entire CNO Canal towpath. Baron Ropp returns to the trail with Weaver to discuss her record-breaking run. Yes, media specialist Lindsay Weaver recently ran the entire CNO Canal, a path which encompasses over 180 miles and set a record for women while doing so. I went to a section of the canal in Brunswick a week after her run to talk with her about her ultra marathon. How did you stay entertained while you ran 180 miles? So for the first 30 miles, I ran by myself and I listened to an audiobook. Um, it was called Living with the Monks by Jesse Itzler and it was, I was trying to get into the monk mindset. Um, because I knew it was going to be a long journey. And then um, after 30 miles, I had friends who came and ran with me along the way. So I would um, run with sometimes for a couple miles and new friends would join me. And so I had friends with me um, almost the entire time. So you had a forest Gump kind of experience with that <laughs> and people just joining along as you continued on your own then. Yes, yeah, it, was, awesome. it was awesome. And I, that was honestly the best part of my run, just the amount of support and my friends and family coming out and joining me along the way. Weaver's pacing was composed of a hybrid of running and walking. Yeah, so um, I decided um, before I started that I was going to do a four minute run, two minute walk interval. Um, because I wanted to keep my heart rate low and I felt like that was one of the most important things to keep Very for long, yeah. longevity. Um, so I um, started out probably about 11 minute mile, um, so that's a run walk situation. And then it progressively it got a little bit longer. Um, and some of my miles, if you look at my, my Garmin miles, um, they're they're long because I stopped and um, changed shoes or took a tiny nap or that kind of thing. So right. it, it varies along the way. I will say my last mile was under um, under 10 minutes. So I was like fed up at the end because I knew it was yeah. almost over. So um, And at that point I was using tracking poles, um, which I've never used in an event before, but they were helpful. Mrs. Weaver's motivation to run the whole canal arose when she wasn't able to travel to Washington for another ultra marathon. The idea to run this stemmed out of um, a race I had looked at um, last year. It, it's called Bigfoot 200. It's in um, Washington State. And I went to sign up for the race. I had never done, I, I, the longest I had ever done before is 100 miles. And uh, so Bigfoot was a big challenge. And I went to sign up and it was really, really expensive. And to not only pay the race fee, but travel to Washington and then lodging and everything. I was like, this is just not um, within my budget. And so I was like trying to come up with something around here that was somewhat equivalent. And we were on the CNO Canal running one day and I was like, how long is this thing? discovered it's almost 200, so um, then I just started planning my own race. Weaver received overwhelming support from friends and family when telling them that she was going to complete the ultramarathon and says that it was a motivating factor in her completion of the ultramarathon. I kind of backtracked when I first told my parents that I wanted to do this at all, they were like, are you crazy? Like, you, we know you've done 100 miles, but this is, this is a lot. Um, and I don't think they doubted me, but um, 
I, I think they were just really happy and um, they, they really liked coming out to support me. Um, and it was kind of like a little party. Everybody came out and they cheered me on and um, they all, uh, I had a bunch of people at the end um, to cheer me on. Mrs. Weaver explains how she would advise someone who's trying to get into the world of distance running. When I, I really started to get into running, it was I, I was out of shape at the time and I, I did a run walk. Um, so like I'd run a couple minutes and then walk and then I'd build on that. And over time, um, I remember I once I had built a little, um, So once I, I had built on my um, base, um, then I was running with friends and they signed up for a 50k and I was like, no way, I've, I've only done a half marathon, there's no way I'm going to do more than that. I'd, I think the most I'd run is 14 miles and there's no way I was going to do a 50k which is 31 miles, um, longer than a marathon and my friends were all signing up for this race. They had a marathon distance, but they also had a 50k distance. And they said, well, if you're gonna do a marathon, you might as well just do a 50k, um, and, because it's just a couple more miles. And so I think it was just like that baby step in a lot of training, like even when you, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, even when you don't feel like running, you gotta go out and do it, especially if you're training for an event whether it's a 5K, 10K, 50K, whatever. It, you need to put in the work and, and do the training. Weaver is unsure of what she will do next in the world of ultra running. But as for right now, she is satisfied with being the fastest woman on the CNO Canal. Many of us are still spending way more time at home than we normally would and are looking for diversions. To break up your day, Patrick Velez recommends watching the Netflix show Drive to Survive. If you're interested in motorsports or are just looking for an interesting show, then the Netflix exclusive series Drive to Survive is the show to dive into. In Drive to Survive, a Netflix camera crew follows and monitors the different teams in Formula One and tells the stories of their season through personal interviews with Formula One drivers as well as miking up the different personnel from each team. During these interviews, you get to learn about the politics and barriers behind participating in the sport and how each team is constantly striving to improve themselves and the performance of the cars throughout each season. What I personally love about this series is that you get to know the, the personalities of the featured drivers and how they were brought up in the world of motorsports, oftentimes being a result of family tradition. The best part is that you don't even have to really know or understand what Formula One is to enjoy this series because Netflix does such an amazing job getting the audience emotionally connected to some of the drivers and the struggles they face throughout the season. The series will get your heart racing when fights between teammates are displayed, and how even the smallest mistakes made by each team can be lethal to the performance of the cars during the races. In Season 1 of Drive to Survive, the Netflix crew focused heavily on the hardships of the American team Haas, which has been struggling with gaining respect and climbing the ranks of Formula 1 ever since their arrival into the sport in 2016. Netflix also touched on the drama caused by the owner of the Force India team, who was arrested in London for fraud charges and jeopardizing the future of his team, and how Canadian billionaire Lawrence Stroll bought the team out. This caused even more controversy within the sport because many saw this move as Lawrence's way of keeping his son Lance in Formula 1 after Lance had lost his driver's seat at the Williams Racing Team. It almost seems like a soap opera at times. So, even if you may not be interested in Formula 1 or motorsports in general, I still highly recommend checking out the Drive to Survive series the next time you're browsing through Netflix and are looking for a series with some action and drama. Sprite is Sprite, right? Aaron Katie will tell you no. In this week's segment of RT+, Plus, Katie visits two fast food giants in Myersville to see which one serves up the best version of her favorite beverage. Burger King and McDonald's, two of the largest fast food corporations in the world, right across the street from each other here in Myersville. I'm here to decide which has the best Sprite. Welcome to Burger King vs. McDonald's Sprite Showdown.
Today we will be rating the sprites based on fizziness, taste, overall value, and a combined average to get the overall score. Let's find out which sprite is better. At Burger King, they have a bit of different drink sizing, so we're getting 21 ounces at each place, but here that's just a small. Now normally that would be better, except that the small here is more expensive than a medium at other places, so that will actually subtract from the score. Makes sense. Dollars and cents. <laughs> it is time, it is time to test it. So, first sip. Alright, right off the bat, I'm getting, it's, it's just like not that sweet. It almost feels watered down, um, but it's still, it doesn't taste bad. So, I'd say taste, like we said, it's, it's just a little watered down almost. So I'm gonna go with a, with a five on the taste aspect. Um, fizziness, um, probably a seven. It's there, but, you know, could be better. Overall vibe, uh, it was a little expensive, um, and it, it just isn't as cold as I would really like. Um, probably gonna have to give it a four on that end. So, if we take the average of all of those, let's see, that would make this... Five point three out of ten overall, so we're getting off to a only okay start. All right, so now we have this lovely McDonald's Sprite, um, dollar six cents, twenty one ounces. So first sip. Delicious, delicious. No other word. Look at it, look at it, it's fizzing out the top. You can see, you can see those, you can see those crystals. It is, del I can't even describe it. Let me, I gotta take another sip. It's just like crisp. It's That's fresh. a different taste. It's That's fresh. definitely different. It feels like you just pick the Sprite right off of the Sprite tree, you know? Definitely nice fresh. Cool. <laughs> Did not know there was a Sprite tree. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's see, taste, uh, I don't want to give it a 10 out of 10, shockingly. Like, I do wish it was, like, slightly sweeter. I love a good sweet Sprite. Mm. Fizz, 10 out of 10. You saw it coming out of the straw. It was insane, like a volcano. That is what we're going for. Overall vibe, It it's nice and cheap. It is the perfect ratio of everything because it's automated so uh, it's the only issue is that for some reason McDonald's Sprites I've noticed they get so condensated I don't know what it is I think I'm gonna give it a nine and a half on overall vibe which brings our average to nine and a half well there you have it McDonald's is the decidedly better Sprite with a volcanic fizz, a refreshing taste, and a great overall value, it's just better. But that's just my opinion. This has been Burger King vs. McDonald's Sprite Showdown. That's it for this episode of RT Magazine, part of the Roundtable's multimedia experience. Thanks for watching. You can find all our episodes on mhsroundtable.com, or you can download our app student news source for access to our articles, videos, and podcasts. Have a great day.